Hey guys, welcome back. Andrew here with Ambient Endeavors. And as we come into the holidays, you know, we're about a week away here uh, from the time of shooting this video. Things are kind of slowing down and a number of my commissioned videos and projects uh, have come to an end and there's a little lull for me. And so I thought it'd be fun uh, to dive into a video that you guys have asked about in roundabout or direct ways for a while. And one that's kind of been on my radar uh, or in the back of my mind for some time too. So we're gonna tackle today a pedal board rundown and just kind of go through my live board, talk about um, each pedal and, and how I use them and and how they interact and the way that I kind of think about my signal chain and workflow and things specifically for my live sound. Um, and I am both excited and a little bit daunted to approach this video, but we're gonna just kind of preface it by saying uh, it's gonna be more long-winded. It's gonna be a little bit uh, more perhaps rambling uh, and just kind of a video that you can maybe settle into with a cup of coffee uh, or a, a drink in the evening sometime. And I'll kind of just try and share some of my thought processes and uh, rationale for uh, some of the effects that I've picked and the way that I've chained them together and why it's worked for me so well. Um, I kind of rewired or relayed out this board uh, this week and my aim, my hope is to uh, have it live permanently at church uh, where I have my weekly gig and just see how long I can last uh, with just this pedal board. For me, it's kind of an attempt to streamline a little bit of what happens here in the studio. And for a long time, I would bring this board home and swap in pedals uh, in and out to do videos and demos and things. Going forward, I'm really hoping to get a studio board set up that I can do that and then just have this board live at church where I can show up, have it all ready to go uh, and not have to do so much uh, tweaking or swapping from week to week. So that's kind of the thought process here. We'll dive into uh, each pedal and the signal chain and all that stuff in a sort of top-down view going forward and just uh, yeah explore the new pedal board and all that it has to offer so um, thanks for joining me on this like I said it's gonna be uh, probably a pretty long video and one that meanders and perhaps rambles at times so settle in uh, grab a cup of coffee uh, grab a beer or a drink if you're watching this in the evening and just uh, enjoy uh, kind of what we've got going on here and, and taking a look at each of the elements of my new pedal board. Drop any comments you have below about any of the pedals, any of the uh, ways that I'm using things. I'm gonna try and hit on some questions that you guys asked over on Instagram, uh, but I'm happy to answer stuff in the comments too if you've got specific questions. Uh, and yeah, we're gonna be using this Jennings Voyager Deluxe. I'm gonna run the board in mono into a Winfield uh, Dust Devil on the Cyclone side. So that's a really cool uh, boutique hand-wired amp that is in the vein of a, a normal channel vintage AC-15. It's what I use at church, actually that specific amp. I'll run that and a 68 Bandmaster in stereo. So we're gonna run into that setup uh, with the Oxbox here in the studio to kind of give you a flavor of what sounds I'm going for in as true and specific way uh, as I can from this board. Uh, thank you so much for watching this. Thanks again for your support and your engagement here on the channel over the last year. I really appreciate all you guys' interest and um, contributions to the community here and hope you guys have a great holiday. Enjoy the video. Here we are, we're at the board, and like I said, I don't know if this is gonna be a 30 minute video or an hour and 30 minute video, but thanks for coming along uh, for the journey here. We're just gonna talk through signal chain, I'm gonna talk through some of the reasons I'm using um, some of these pedals, uh, and just kind of meander our way through this board. So we'll start by talking about the actual board. Um, I have used more or less this setup for a while now, probably a few years. 
Uh, and I have this flat board from Creation Audio laying around the studio. It's a little bit wider than a Pedal Train 2. It gives a little bit more room to breathe here. So I use that. Um, as you'll notice, it's not a glamorous wiring job. I do all that stuff myself, and I'm a big fan of just reusing stuff that's around the studio here. So it's kind of a uh, an amalgamation of a bunch of recycled cables and repurposed cables and things, but it works. So yeah, it's a pretty typical flat board. Everything's got its place. And then the riser here uh, that the Volante and Mercury 7 are on are from a guy named Jay Nepo out in, uh, I think, the East Coast somewhere. He does custom board wirings too, does some fantastic work. And he also uh, designs and has these machined, um, these pedal risers. I think there's two or three different sizes he offers, but these are super slick to put uh, things like the Strymon big boxes or just, I guess, any pedal you want on and get it elevated a little bit for a flat board. So the power I have um, underneath there, and then I've also got a little patch bay underneath I'll talk about later. Um, but those risers are really fantastic. Um, so I'll drop a link to his site uh, or his socials on the in the bio if you're interested in those. Um, and yeah, I think we'll just start by talking through the signal chain and then start to hear some sounds from from the board and talk through some of my choices here. So we're coming in uh, at the Sonic Research Turbo Tuner, one of my favorite tuners of all time. They're just fantastic. Um, and then going up to the Bondi Squish As compressor and then into the Boss MS3. And that's where I'm basically controlling the drive section here. So in the first loop, we have the 1981 LVL. Loop two, we have the Bondi Sick As. Loop three, we have the Bondi Delmar. And then that is out to a patch bay that I have underneath the Volante here. And it's essentially an audition patch bay. So uh, at church, sometimes I'll plug in a volume pedal and that will allow me to um, basically have that plugged in if I want through two jacks on the back. Or if I don't have that, it will just pass the signal on through to the um, Line 6 HX1. And then from there, we go in stereo the rest of the way, stereo to the Brigadier, the Volante, and the Mercury 7. So that's the signal chain. Um, and then we're running into the Winfield amp, like I mentioned. It's sort of a vintage AC-15 kind of vibe. And I run stereo at church, but it's maybe a little bit different than folks imagine stereo. Um, my front of house guy will end up just using the Winfield primarily as my main amp and then for different moments solos or big sections where he, he needs to kind of push things or add a little bit of a volume or textural difference he'll um, fade in some of that second amp I use a 68 bandmaster as the secondary amp and so just brings out some more brightness and clarity and, and some power behind certain moments so the stereo is really more situational and contextual and less um, like you might imagine the kind of always on wide, big, expansive stereo sound. Uh, we generally have keys player. We generally have tracks going and things. So there's a lot of space already taken up by some of those instruments in the stereo field. And uh, so, like I said, a little more situational, uh, the use of stereo. And so it's not a hugely like integral part of my sound. Uh, for that specific setting. And so here we're just running in mono and I think you can still get a really good feel for, for what this board sounds like and how I'm using it that way. So let's start by just walking through the effects here and I'll share some sounds as we go along and just talk through kind of my choices and how I'm using these combinations of pedals along the way. So starting with the Bondi Squish As, came out a couple months ago and I've been able to play it for a while. Um, I got kind of an early version of it and was really impressed with it. It just is a, a great pedal to use front of chain for me to kind of glue everything together, keep things cohesive, um, to level out or, you know, kind of compress some hotter attacks uh, from the guitar and really just, yeah, kind of is the glue of the clean sound. I leave it always on because I just, it's one of those compressors that is subtle enough that you don't really notice uh, it, it's on until you turn it off and it doesn't get in the way um, as like an effect like some compressors do. So I've been really happy with that and really love that as sort of the first in chain. So we can hear some sounds from that. I've got, um, the Brigadier is kind of always on for me. 
Uh, the Mercury 7, again, is mostly always on, and I'll tweak settings on that when we talk about that. Um, but this is kind of how the squish has sounds and, and what it does to the clean sound. <laughs> Also mentioned the LVL is on right now too. So that's about how I'll have it set. Um, it's fairly mild. It's usually not doing more than, you know, three or six dB of gain reduction. And depending on what guitar I have, this is a more mild signal from the Jennings here. Uh, so it's not going to do a ton of work, but sometimes I've got a hotter signal and it'll, it'll be att attenuating that, um, just using some more gain reduction on that um, for hotter guitars. But just nice and subtle. Um, and like I said, helps level out the input and helps just kind of glue everything together. I also really love the EQ. Um, I think it's a great feature that he added to that circuit. The tone control is a tilt style, so I usually dial it you know, clockwise a little bit past noon to add a little bit more top end. I tend to play guitars that are a little bit warmer um, or that sometimes I want to add a little more brightness back to it before it goes downstream, and so that helps a bunch with that. And then also you have the input control, or I'm sorry, the output control that can act as that makeup volume for you. So you could use it as like an EQ boost type thing uh, or a compressor or a little bit of both, kind of how I use it, where you're adding a little bit of tone shaping and a little bit of compression with the blend, you know, pretty modest down there um, to just add a little bit of the effect. Um, from there, we can talk about the drive section here. So this is kind of, uh, we'll talk about the MS3 a little bit, but as many of you have asked questions about it, I, I always get a little bit um, not embarrassed, but I don't really use much of this pedal. Um, my main purpose for the MS3 is to have control of the three drive pedals, like, like I mentioned in the signal chain walkthrough, and I don't do a lot beyond that. So um, how I'm using it here is just to create presets or to just have remote control of each of the drive pedals so that I don't have to you know, kick two pedals on or off uh, to switch settings on the fly. So <clears throat> the first preset here is just the sick as, two is the LVL, three is those two stacked, and then four here is the Delmar for like the big higher gain sounding sounds. Uh, and we'll just walk through uh, that kind of progression and give you a taste of how I kind of do gain staging live and um, yeah, we'll start with LVL. This is kind of as close to like my go-to cleanish sound, always on sound. And what we've got going here is Squish As, LVL, Brigadier, and Mercury 7.
yeah, that's really kind of what I would consider my clean sound. Just a little bit of texture. Having the LVL does give you the opportunity to add some dynamic as you dig in or pull back. And to kind of hit on a question that I got on Instagram about gain staging and how I play, uh, I think the question was in terms of do you use your volume knob live or do you more kind of do it here with pedals and gain staging? And honestly, it's mostly the latter. I don't play a lot with my volume knob, but I think the strong caveat is that I do uh, really stay in tune uh, to the dynamics I'm using with my right hand. And I think there's a lot you can do with that and a lot that I try and do on the fly um, when I'm approaching songs or sets um, by varying my intensity or the attack of your right hand uh, to either clean your sound up or to get a little bit more out of that a gain stage there. So I think for me personally, I can get a lot of dynamic range that way. And it's, it's a, it's a, a technique that you can kind of grow and develop. And one that I think is really powerful to have in your arsenal, especially um, for, you know, certain songs that want you to kind of, you know, duck in or out or uh, when you don't want to make a dramatic shift in the middle of a song, uh, but just add a little bit of a nuance to the the texture or the attack of certain parts. So even with a pedal like the LVL, I think it's really great because it's pretty responsive to your playing. You can do a lot without switching any pedals or doing any sort of changes to effects. So I'll just kind of show that. Um, sometimes I'll pick really lightly or, or go to my finger picking to play a more delicate, cleaner sounding parts and then move to a pick with more attack for some more uh, gritty texture, uh, just all in the same overdrive setting. So that's a little bit about sort of the right hand technique that I'll do a fair amount of during sets on Sundays. And then if I'm making more dramatic shifts in gain staging, I'll go to um, some of the other drive pedals. So we'll walk through those and you'll notice that it's fairly incremental. Um, I don't use a ton of gain overall and I also don't usually make too dramatic of shifts in my gain staging. Um, mainly just want it to be kind of an incremental um, increase you know from verse to chorus or from chorus to bridge or bigger solar pa solo parts so that's kind of how i arrange drive section and drive settings and things uh so yeah we'll start we started there with the lvl that's kind of uh usually my always on cleanish tone go to the sick ass here This is pretty similar. It's just a little bit different flavor, um, a little bit more prominent in like the mids uh, the, for the sick as versus a warmer tone from the LVL. Sometimes I'll choose between the two as my kind of always on go to depending on what guitar I'm using or just the songs in the set or whatever the vibe is. But those two are kind of in a similar vein as far as gain or saturation goes. <laughs> Or sometimes I'll dial up the gain on sick as to make it a little bit more of an incremental uh, gain jump there. In 
can kind of have those two options to pick from um, as my kind of baseline clean sound. Then from there, I can stack the two, which I really like. Just a nice kind of second gain stage there if you're going from LVL. To the stacked there. And then for my biggest sound, I'll go to the Delmar. So yeah, that's kind of the biggest it gets. <clears throat> um, like I mentioned, if I need something like crazier or a little bit more higher gain, I'll toss in something like that Jam Rattler or a DRV, uh, either in replace of the Delmar or in the LVL spot and just kind of go, you know, first stage, second stage, third stage uh, versus the stacking. Um, but this sort of pair or set of presets here is really all I need uh, for most Sundays and it's kind of all the gain territories that I usually play in just kind of incremental increases in gain and texture for different parts of the song um, and yeah that's been really kind of my go-to approach for drives and for the gain staging that I do on the board here for a while. One more note on the MS-3, because I know a lot of you guys are really curious about it. <clears throat> um, there are some really cool features to this pedal, and there's a lot of great sounds in it. Uh, I've occasionally used things like tremolo or big reverbs or reverse delays or things like that for gigs or on the fly if I just forgot to add a pedal to my board and... and realize I need something in a pinch in terms of mainly in terms of modulation or some of those pedals categories that you don't see on this board and it's boss and so they they really have some great sounding effects um, I'm not going to pretend that they're like the best sounding reverb delay trem sounds that you could get um, but certainly if you are someone that just kind of occasionally needs sounds like that or if you're someone who just really wants to optimize um, the, your access to a lot of those sounds and create signal chains. It's pretty easy to do that um, by stringing a couple together and incorporating some drives here. And I've done that on, on rare occasion. I just tend to prefer you know, having a little more tactile experience. And also, I just have my preferences for different sounding um, effects here on the board that I lean into in terms of individual pedals. But the nice thing about it is you can add up to two modulation effects. You can add delay, reverb, um, and then also mix in your overdrive sounds uh, within those signal chains. So you really have the option to do a number of different uh, combinations and create some fun signal chains with the onboard effects. Um, the limitation that I honestly didn't realize when I bought this, um, because some of the other boss loopers are, are different, but you can't reorder... Uh, the external loops. So I can't like switch the order of the drives. I have to sort of have them set and then just stack them how they are. So that's a little bit of a bummer and kind of one of the reasons why I'm considering longer term or for other board builds um, a different option for that kind of matrix looping of the overdrives and perhaps some other pedals. But for my purposes on this board and honestly kind of for how I use the board and function live. 
uh, this has been really great and it's served the purpose for me of creating those presets and having easy control over overdrives. You also have some nice little features. I guess I've used this before. You have a boost op option to kind of boost or cut the patch level if you need. That can kind of help if you want to just, if you like the tone you're getting and just want to boost it or cut it a little bit to kind of even out volumes or to accommodate that. Um, there is MIDI, you can do some MIDI stuff with it, but there's some limitations to it in terms of how much, uh, how many messages you can send or, or kind of like the, the entirety of what you can do with the MIDI. So, uh, that's something to look into in terms of the manual maybe and see, um, what it all can do and what you're hoping to do. But if you're wanting to just do simple, um, patch switches or things like that, uh, definitely could be used to integrate uh, MIDI into your setup too. I also just love the interface is, is pretty smooth um, and the screen is great. It's, there's a lot of visibility into the patch and you can name things and things like that. So for the price point used and for what you get with it, it's really a pretty awesome unit, especially if you're gonna dive into some of the effects on board. Another reason why I don't uh, really use a bunch of the effects or rarely ever use the boss uh, unit for effects now is because of this HX1. So this is kind of the newest addition to the board and one that has quickly become a mainstay. So we'll talk about that and um, jump into some of the sounds here, just show you a few sounds on it that I've loved initially and I'm kind of continuing to find sounds that I like uh, and would use and we'll probably create some presets going forward to just have different modulation sounds and some delay and reverb and some kind of experimental sounds too. So we'll turn the Brigadier off. Go back to the LVL and then this transistor tape has been one I've like really been enjoying. It is not too flashy, it's just a great sounding tape echo. You can get some nice wow and flutter. Um, you can do some different tweaking of uh, spread parameters and headroom and thing like things like that um, but it's really just a nice just a solid sounding tape delay and again maybe you've noticed this by now but uh, I'll probably reiterate it a number of times I don't really do a lot of flashy stuff with this board um, we don't have a, a widely varying set list or a huge kind of like range of dynamics and sound that we hit at our church and so it's uh, really pretty, stays pretty tight to how I would usually approach sounds elsewhere. Um, and so I'll end up just using this pedal as either secondary delays or um, for some modulation when I need those for songs. And then I'll get to a next, uh, one of my favorite glitch delay uh, settings and sounds that I'll use for moments for kind of textural stuff. But well, let's hear the transistor tape. Just a really nice, lush uh, tape echo style effect. Um, and I'll lean on that for either certain moments where I want that kind of wow and flutter, the kind of fluttery tape thing, or use it as a complimentary, like second delay to the Brigadier. But that's one of my favorite sounds so far on this. Uh, the next one, the Dynamic Hall. I kind of discovered this through the DL4 Mark II uh, with all their reverbs they put on that pedal. But this is one that I can envision doing some kind of big, expansive sounds with and using 
as like an ambient effect for pads or for swells or for moments like that as either a pairing or an alternative to the Mercury 7. So I'll play a little bit of this to show you. I'll add some delay on here too. Just a really nice, big, expansive hall reverb sound. I don't know that I'll use that much, um, but it's really, honestly, the value of having the HX1 is the fact that you've got access to literally any effect that you'd want from Line 6. And so it's great to have that there, and it would certainly be useful to have that really big, expansive ambient verb uh, as an option. One of my other favorite effects that I'll show is this glitch delay. And this is really cool to just kind of create some like, it's got reverse delay, it's got pitch shifting, just some really nice sparkly textural stuff that can happen that can use either to capture in a loop with Volante or to just kind of use as pad textures underneath sections of songs, maybe when we don't have a keys player uh, or certain instances like that. But I love the sound of this and usually dial in a pretty long repeat. Um... Dial that up a little bit, keep the mix down pretty low. A lot of these effects, if you lean into the subtleties or kind of just have little bits of them in your playing, they can go a long way without it being so overpowering or so um, prominent. But a pitch, a bunch of reverse. Let's hear how that sounds. Yeah, so that's just a really fun effect, um, in my opinion. It adds some of that shimmer, some of that reverse um, movement, and some of those kind of things that pair really well with 
the delays and reverbs happening and can create some cool textural layers if if I'm kind of shifting to that mode for playing uh, for different parts or songs. <clears throat> That's the HX1. There's so much to dive into on that pedal. Um, I think I might even get a second one to have in the studio here and kind of explore building out some presets and, and, and incorporating MIDI maybe even to um, either recall patches or do some more with that. But really powerful unit, and I love just having access to all the different effects on the fly if needed. Uh, from there, let's switch over to the Brigadier and just kind of focus in on that. Um, there was a question on Instagram about why, with all the good analog delays out there, why do I choose the Brigadier um, over some of those true analog pedals? And I did a video on the Brigadier right around the time the Brig came out, and it talks a little bit about why I chose that pedal and why I've used it for years and years and years and why I continue to use it. Uh, but to answer the question about why the digital recreation of analog over a true analog pedal um, is mainly for quality of life and for tone, I guess. So two parts. Um, but the first being that I like having all the different controls that you have with the Brigadier uh, in terms of the way you can shape uh, mod and bucket loss and filter. Um, the way that you can set subdivisions, do tap tempo really easily on the fly. Um, the fact that it's stereo uh, is a nice perk, and now the market is kind of just catching up to that with some true analog delays in stereo, which I'm excited to try out and stuff. But, um, but mainly, uh, when I started using the Brigadier, the analog delays on the market were really cool, um, but also a really specific sound and, and a lot of analog delays you'll hear that with that kind of warm gooey repeat um, a little bit of slosh to it uh, which is really fun and useful in certain contexts but I honestly don't love the the true pure unadulterated analog delay sound I think sometimes it can get too muddy in the mix sometimes it can kind of get too uh, jumbled in with the other effects that I'm using and so the beauty of the Brigadier to me was that it does retain this like clarity and cleanness even in some of the settings where you're dialing in a little bit of the bucket loss or some character and texture to it um, but it doesn't get overly chewy or kind of uh, it just doesn't clutter the mix like some of the analog delays I've used in the past and so for that reason it, it feels a little bit more like a hybrid and it, it kind of is because it's a digital analog but um, yeah, retaining some of that clarity, uh, allowing it to stand out in the mix a little bit better than sometimes analog delays um, stand out. And then also avoiding some of the like aliasing and noise issues that a lot of Bucket Brigade analog pedals have um, that I just kind of can't get past. Um, so it might maybe sacrifice a little bit of the like magic of a true analog delay. But what I really like about it is, like I said, that kind of hybrid clarity and slightly high fineness that you get because it's digital um, while it's also still capturing I think some of the cool elements of analog delay sounds. Um, I also use the tap tempo and the runaway oscillation a ton so on this specific pedal um, that's kind of a big selling point for me and honestly one of the reasons why I think it'll be hard for me to transition to the Brig um, but the Brigadier has just for so many years been my favorite pedal my favorite delay pedal and just I think kind of a cornerstone of the sound that I have in my head and the sound I'm trying to kind of recreate here with this board so we'll play around a little bit with this um, you've heard it a bunch before and, and on that other video that I can link to but this is kind of my go-to delay sound <laughs>
So that's Brigadier. And then I'll often pair that with the Volante. And usually I'll have it in a mode that's just a pretty simple secondary delay. is great for so many reasons um, it just kind of stays out of the way in a nice way to me and makes it great as a pairing for the Brigadier for like a dual delay thing uh, and you can also dial in that more like lo-fi sounding like high high wear and high mechanic settings that are cool I'll do that sometimes for kind of a lo-fi effect. Um, but mainly I'm using that type of a sound, just a really subtle secondary delay. To kind of fill out the sound like that, or to do more volume swell type type of stuff. Just adding a little bit of a different texture with that secondary delay and with the way that you can manipulate the textures and kind of quality of the tape sound on the Volante is cool. Um, there's a really cool multi-head effect that you can do with stereo and panning and things that again I don't do a lot of live uh, but in the studio it's really fun to do some of that like panned do multi-head multi-tap delay for, from Volante so that's really cool uh, the other thing I love about Volante and the reason why it stays on my board primarily is because of the sound on sound looper so I'll oftentimes again mainly when we don't have a keys player or if there's a, a week that the team is just a little bit bare I'll end up doing loops on the fly that can kind of create beds or textural uh, foundations to songs and so it's really really useful to have that live uh, on the fly and I'll just like spend a few minutes creating a loop like I would and have we'll have a little intermission here so if you need to grab another drink or go to the bathroom or tuck your kids into bed you can do that um, and then we'll just kind of let this ambiance play for a bit and come back in a moment.
Yeah, so that's Falante. That's kind of why I love that pedal so much, is you can just get lost in that type of sound-on-sound -sound looping. <clears throat> um, I could do a little walkthrough of, of that, but you could also check the manual. But you basically can just set a record, and then it kind of just records layer over layer until you um, hold the left button to essentially stop the recording of the input then you can play over top of it you can also kick the left button once to reverse the loop which i did um, which is really fun and kind of creates that uh, reverse texture throughout your loop um, there's an you can also mess with the speeds of the loop which is cool so you can record like something i just did and then i'll show you you can pitch it down or pitch it up um, which is is a fun thing to mess with so that's the standard loop Some really fun like tape stop, tape machine type effects there um, that I've always loved messing around with. So that's the looper on Volante, and I get a lot of use out of that live actually. So, so from there we'll move on to the last pedal in the chain here, Mercury Seven, and this is genuinely one of my favorite reverbs. Um, I decided to throw it back on the board a couple months ago, and I've really loved it. I think. Again, reverb is one of those things I don't use a huge variety of for this um, board and in this setting. And the Mercury 7 just has a great like ambient leaning reverb and you can do some cool things on the fly with it, which I love and I'll show about that. Uh, and so, yeah, it's on the board. I've got the Mercury X in for demo and I'm really expecting that thing to kind of blow my mind as I've heard a couple people mention it's awesome and picks up where this leaves off. So at some point down the road, I might kind of switch to that as my main reverb, but this has pretty much everything I'd need. Um, and then again with the HX1 in tandem, if I need to flex down to a reverb in there, I always can. So some flexibility there and uh, nice to have those two options. But Mercury 7 is sort of, it's an always on and I'll use a more mild setting for it um, throughout the set. And then if I need to dial it up for a song that's more ambient or washy, I'll do that on the fly. Um, and yeah, let's check out the sounds from that. I'll turn the looper off here. I guess we've been hearing that the whole video um so you kind of have a sense of what that that flavor is of reverb that's the cathedral mode and i'll use that most often to just kind of have that more ambient leaning reverb uh, and usually i'll run it about how it is with the highs nudged a little bit and the lows a little bit rolled off you can do some cool shimmer stuff with this pedal if you want is great to have on tap too um, but I'll usually just use it as my kind of foundational reverb sound I'll sometimes add some modulation but I often will have a modulation on the repeats of a delay or two and so I'll usually use the modulation there and leave the mercury 7 modulation all the way off um, but we'll just see how it sounds here
just such a nice reverb. Um, yeah, I just, I love the voicing of this pedal. Uh, you can get some really big, deep sounding verbs if you dial everything up. We'll mess with that a little bit. So just some really long decay possibilities there. <clears throat> so probably the last thing I'll talk about is the Swell foot switch, which I end up using a fair amount live. Um, it's great for transitions or just holding out or sustaining notes going from one section to the next or creating kind of those ambient pad textures as an intro or as sort of a build up to a moment there. So I get a, a lot of use out of that and I genuinely like, I like having the runaway feedback on delay pedals and that freeze function on reverbs. And so I've kind of honed in on the options that have that and there's not as many of those for reverb pedals. And so Mercury 7 uh, does a great job of that. And there's a couple other pedals I've loved. Um, the Jet Pedals Revelation has a nice freeze function. Um, but I'm kind of always hunting a, a reverb that has that feature because I use it so much. <laughs> also has this swell function so you can negate the need for a volume pedal if you want um, and do this auto swell. which is a kind of a nice feature too there if you want. Um, yeah, so that's the board. Um, I think we hit on about everything and that's kind of how I use it. Um, it's nothing too flashy in terms of variety of sounds. I don't feel, although the HX1 does give me the option for a lot of different uh, potential sounds. Um, but we kind of went over gain staging. We talked about the different delays uh, I'm using and how I'm doing that and um, the Mercury 7 is kind of the the finishing reverb at the end there. So uh, that's the new board. We're going to see how long it lasts. We're going to see how long I can go without swapping stuff in and out. Uh, and it's just going to live at church um, so I can show up and, and plug in and get going. And um, yeah, I'm feeling good about it. Like I said, a lot of the elements of this board have been consistent for a number of years, honestly. And so uh, it, it doesn't feel too daunting to commit to it. Um, and I imagine that we'll probably mix in or out a couple pedals here or there. But um, yeah, thanks for joining me here with the walkthrough. It's been fun to, for me to kind of just um, re revisit and kind of form formalize my approaches and the way that I use the signal and the signal chain and the different effects. And so hope it was beneficial to you guys. And uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them below and um, check in over on Instagram too and drop me a message if you've got specific questions about this rig or just what you're kind of debating in your own rig. I always enjoy uh, talking gear and talking about different options and different choices and approaches and things to, to playing. So it's fun to get to do this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it and uh, make sure to like, subscribe, do all that jazz and enjoy your holiday. Take care.